Kaboom! Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Live from Kingston, Jamaica, broadcasting around the world. Around the world. You're watching the Teach Dem YouTube show. Intellectual, yet stimulating. Fair, frank, and factual. This is Extra Class, streaming to the world and beyond. Beyond. You know, it's Teach Dem, the number one intellectual blogging panel on the YouTube channel. Good night, everyone. Let me know if you're seeing me clearly. Let me know if you're hearing me clearly. If you're seeing and hearing me clearly, welcome to another episode of Extra Class, episode number 324. I trust that everybody who is in the hearing of my voice and seeing my face, you are doing well, family, safe. I notice that I'm seeing Rosie be in the stream. As I shared with you in the previous stream, Rosie had um, a surgery. A medical procedure was done she has been home resting recuperating her recovery has been you know steady also Empress Millicent Thomas McDermott Auntie Millie <laughs> she also did an operation on her knee um, recovery has been slow but it has been you know coming along I have been in touch checking up on them periodically and stuff you know I think in our family even though we're busy and thing you know our heart love said speed so Rosie it's good to see you uh, I guess probably um, Auntie Millie probably a will a nap. Yeah, so I say she probably passed through. Look, more. peeps, big up on herself. No long talk. Me hungry, that I first thing. But just realize as the stream start, me hungry. So uh, right now, me just a take on the road. Yeah, son. Yeah, one big up all the people in the building. Um, Omito, um, me I say RB, James Bond. We are the idiot. Hope all is well enough. The Royal, Wagwan, Delroy, Lady Clark, all of the people in the business. In the building, all of the moderator them, you know what I'm going to give thanks, appreciate the continued support. So I could get that something up and running now, because I'm hungry. <laughs> I would just like a stream so early. Yo, Jaja, I want to grow, I will grow them. Yeah, I, I don't know how to grow them. I'm going to talk about some things, you know. Then they not, they not grow good. Yes, Rasta Judge, 144 new COVID-19 cases. One more death recorded. Um, let me try share that something here. Boom. 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 Um. Mm. Yeah, peeps. I want to look here and, you know, share if you care and them something there. Miss, Miss Bernard. Miss Bernard. How are you? 144 new COVID-19 cases with one more death. So Jamaica has recorded one more COVID-19 fatality, pushing the tally to 1,168. So up to this point, it is confirmed that 1,168 Jamaicans have died. I mean, Jamaicans at home, that is. The deceased is a 57-year-old man from St. James. And two more fatalities are on the investigation, moving the figure to 103. So 103 fatal, 103 deaths are on the investigation to find out if they are linked to COVID-19. Meanwhile, there were 144 new cases with ages ranging from 4 days to 86 years, pushing the total to 51,686 with 3,668 being active. Of the new cases, 83 are women and 61 are men. St. Anne dominates the new cases with 33 being recorded, followed by Kingston and St. Andrew with 29 and then St. Catherine with 19. A total of 2,140 tests were conducted and the country's positivity rate stands at 11.2%. Per percent. Percent. <laughs> in the meantime, there were 21 more recoveries, increasing the total to 46,794. Some 129 persons are in hospital, with 34 being moderately ill and 19 critically ill. 19 critically ill is a lot of critically ill, so we keep an eye on that. Six persons are in government quarantine, while 43,281 are at home. 
Jaja God. That's a lot. Hey, Kanaika, how are you? It's good to see you. Empress Joan Grey, Tamika Garden. Big up on yourself, you know. Be Empress, you go on. You know the thing said. Yeah, peeps. So, that are the COVID situation. So, the numbers have been gradually trending upwards in the past couple of days. As any well thinking person would have understand, would be the situation seeing that. The COVID-19 restrictions and measures have been relaxed for the past couple of weeks. And as Jamaicans, we don't do things generally in moderation. Um, we always OD things. Um, you know, and the restrictions, lifting the restrictions, I mean, it has been a long time coming. Like, it, something had to happen. But the truth is that as Jamaicans, we are not all mature enough to to understand that COVID still a keep and there are many parties out in the street you know what thing you know party settings people are drink people are dance people are prance COVID that take a glance you know what I mean I just saw a thing set up um mm, that I go on watch uh, just a minute yeah so I heard, well, yeah, yeah, I heard a release from the office of the Prime Minister earlier in the week that Cabinet will be meeting on Tuesday to look at the data currently available to see if measures need to be tightened again or posed. And um, we watch and see. I have my concerns that the academic school year will, well, may not get on the way come September if there is a spike, a significant spike and the truth of the matter is the kids have had enough mentally they, they can't take no more you understand what I say? they need to come out of the homes and breathe a little that is just the truth that is it is going to be very difficult to subject these children to another term or year in the virtual space for classes. The teachers, many of them are frustrated. Parents are frustrated. But also added to that, many of the persons who are causing a spike are parents. Them, them with them pitney and them yard and gone do things irresponsibly. You understand? And then them see them on our course come September, this and that. So it, 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 it's just, Jaja, it, it's rough. You understand? And I am very cognizant of the situation, re our students. I, I can tell you where some of their mental spaces are, and it's not them yard, may I tell you. They have had enough. Many of these kids are not intellectually capable enough to analyze the situation, understand what is really going on. Them just want to go to school, them want to leave home, them, them want to see them friends, them want to play. You understand what I say? It is just, it, it, it has been rough for them. And as I'm saying, based on my observation and analysis, we may be looking down the barrel of another COVID 19 spike. Yeah, so me no me no me no know if people really are meds or something, eh? Zane, but say at the certain thing there. Eh? Mm. Yeah man, this is a current situation, bro. So me med some things a look more. Yeah, so I say, yeah man, give thanks. But enough of that. I come move on, get with groove on, cause you know what thing go. Last week, last time I streamed, I did not address any murder situation. I'm not too, too delve on that tonight, but I'm just run through some things to remind people say the crime situation in the country is still at a very high level. It is... I don't even know how to describe it anymore, other than to say it is untenable. Some of us will run through a few things and then we'll talk about some other things. You know things at all. Um, male suspect being sought 
after fatal Canefield shooting in Clarendon. So a male suspect is being sought in relation to the fatal shooting of a man in Four Path, Clarendon on Monday. The name of the deceased has not yet been released. He, well, he is, however, known to be of Portmore Saint, of a Portmore St. Catherine address. And reports are that the man and another individual were in a car in a cane field when explosions were heard. The car with the suspected shooter left the scene shortly after. Passers-by alerted the police to the scene and early assessment by investigators suggested that the man and his attacker were involved in a physical dispute before the eventual victim was shot. The police are asking anyone who observed the car or can identify the other occupant of the vehicle to contact the Mapen police or the 119 police emergency number. Them not give the Mapen police number, yes, so I don't really know what's going on. Yes, and so, yeah, Canefield shooting. I don't know how they end up in the Canefield, what they did they do. But some altercation developed, some tussle, some bustle some muzzle and them something uh, Jamaica I tell you woman and four year old son shot and killed by a gunman in St. James a mother and her four year old and her four year old son were shot and killed by a gunman in St. James the deceased have been identified as Shelly Ann Shaw and her son Jamar Powell a 49-year-old man was also injured during the attack. Now reports are that about 3 a.m. on Monday, the 42-year-old mother and her son were at their board house in Hilltop Retirement Section or in the Hilltop Retirement Section of the parish when three masked men armed with handguns entered their yard and opened gunfire at the house. The gunshots penetrated the wooden structure and also struck Shaw in the left upper arm and left side and their child to the head, right hand, and abdomen. They were both rushed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where they were treated and admitted in a serious condition. Reports are that Shaw died on Tuesday while undergoing treatment. Her son also succumbed to his injuries shortly after. <sighs> Four year old, eh? Four years old. Two fatally shot by a gunman in Marvelous St. Andrew. Two men were killed when gunmen struck in Marvelous St. Andrew on Thursday night, about 8 o'clock. The men were at a property on Moberly Avenue when a car drove up. Men alighted the vehicle and opened fire on the two individuals. They were pronounced dead at hospital. Now, just to... No, you know, say Sheldon, you know, me ain't too feel long, too long, and do any stream, say, teach them, make a message, I reach them. Young British reach me to it. That does that go on, you understand? Eh. Um, the marvelous situation is ongoing. I read. Something that has been in circulation on social media for the past couple of days. We are apparently a resident from Marvali or in Marvali who is apparently frustrated and tired of the situation taking place there penned a letter of sorts to the Minister of National Security and the Prime Minister along with some other people call some name this state some fame said some stuff and say gun nga marvel enough enough I sat and I read, and I read, and I read, it is very long, and some names were mentioned, and some things were said, and I don't know if the police are actually looking into it. However, if what was described in that letter is true, then... The marvel the situation has to be treated with. As I said, some very interesting names were mentioned. Um, but I'll leave it there. I cannot verify the authenticity of the piece. But yeah. 876 Brogard, you man, wanna go on.
Empress Millicent, what go on? I bless you up in and start a streaming, you know what I mean? Hope you are feeling okay, less pain, and the recovery is coming on. Yeah? So, that are the marvel thing. I... The person who authored the piece, if it is true, said residents know what is going on, but they are afraid to talk because they live in fear for their lives and the lives of their loved ones. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anybody in here actually read it or have seen it, but I sat and I read. It was sent to me as many things are, and I read and I read and I read and... It, it never make for good reading. That's all I can say. Zayn, and me I take the opportunity I still. I don't really know the marvel thing. I don't really know nobody from Dungdal. You see it? However, if anybody from Marvel I pray that something here. Or the man listen that something here. If you're not involved in the thing, stay safe. Zayn, and, and, and stay brave. If you're involved in the thing, they need to come out. You understand? Them things don't make no sense, brother. Zane, what the man them around there fight for? I don't know, but I'm sure it probably doesn't make no sense. You understand? How many lives will be lost in Marvali, around Marvali? How many families will be destroyed? How many kids will become orphaned? or fatherless or motherless and for how long shall the cycle of killing and reprisals and hits and foolishness continue so even if we know you it we don't go on all strong if we know you it we don't dash the foolishness for that's all I can say because boy I do even know <sighs> Don't you know the ghetto where me born and grow? Me no know no daddy I just mama want me know. We no want no more bloodshed. We no want no more youths dead. Ja ja. Don't you know the ghetto where we burn and grow? Another farmer killed, this time, a 60-year-old Portland woman. Police investigators are probing the murder of a 60-year-old female farmer whose partially burnt body with chop wounds was found in St. Margaret's Bay, Portland on Thursday. The deceased has been identified as Cynthia Hines, popularly known as Tiny of St. Margaret's Bay in the parish. She is the second farmer to be killed in Jamaica within less than 24 hours. In relation to Hines' death, police said sometime between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. on Thursday, a passerby found the body burning in a hut on a farm and alerted residents. The police were summoned and on their arrival, the law enforcers found the charred remains of a woman, later identified to be that of Heinz, in the hut on the farm which she operated. Further reports indicated that some of Heinz's limbs were dismembered. It is being theorized that she was attacked at the farm sometime after she left her home at about 5 a.m. on Thursday morning. No motive has yet been established for the killing. We don't want no more bloodshed. We don't want no more you dead. <sighs> Heinz's killing came on the heels of Wednesday's shooting death of 32 year old farmer Alex Morgan in Horton District, St. Elizabeth. Like Heinz, Morgan was killed on his farm in his community. Reports are that sometime after 1 p.m. on Wednesday, Morgan and other men were working on his farm when they were approached by a gunman. 
the man opened fire hitting Morgan several times before fleeing the scene. The wounded farmer was assisted to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. A probe is also ongoing in Morgan's killing. Addition, additionally, in relation to um, Rick Golden blessings to Morgan's killing, apparently the, the shooter walked up to him and they exchanged words and he opened fire hitting, the shooter opened fire hitting him. None of the other men who were working were, were killed. So it seemed like the man definitely got for Morgan. Um, I have no idea what the motive is. Two farmers kill on their farm. Yes, yeah, son. Because some man are interested for, far for farm corn. But they're interested for farm corn. Uh, never mind. Life is so cool. Don't mean how they get to be born. Male teenager shot dead in Westmoreland. A 17-year-old boy was shot dead in Westmoreland on Tuesday night. He has been identified as Leonardo Long, a resident of Smithfield District. Now reports are that about 8.30 p.m. Residents heard gunfire in the community. The body, of the, teen, the body of the teenager was found on a dirt track during a search on Wednesday morning. The police are investigating the development. Um, let me just pass the local cars. I don't know if you're real. I, have, I am trying as best as possible to, to read as fluently as I can, making all the right pronunciations and enunciations and shading and coloring my words and calling my th and my word endings i'll share a story about that soon <laughs> yeah so um i'm not sure if auntie Faye ellington is watching but yeah we kind of work on some things um Faye and i have been doing some sessions you know we, 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 we know that we have weaknesses and we have been working on same for a while now for a couple of weeks yeah, that's, I'm just never telling nobody. You see me? So we reach out and you know what I mean work out something and we've been having those sessions. Um one hour per week. They have been very, very wonderful. Um I have improved in many, many different areas. It's just that I haven't been doing those type of videos a lot of late because of the time. But you know, we are try practice the thing. I'm going to just drop that in for kind of break. The whole murder vibes. Because, ja, ja. Yeah. Yes. Auntie Faye. She's going to stop calling her Auntie Faye and call her Faye. <laughs> and if she has listened, she's going to say it's Auntie Faye and not Auntie Faye. And then I say something like Auntie Faye. And then we just wore for a while. Wonderful lady. Yeah, man. Wondering if guns buy a bop would help. No question asked. 500 US for each tool. I will be able to find so much money 500 US for each for each tool, bro. I know that there has been, well, probably I shouldn't say that because I know they were offering up to $100,000 for certain type of weapons back in the days. Um, The family is doing well in a rosy. Chelsea is here, Amir is here, you know, everybody is here. So, wait, 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 wait. Them good, man. There. Yeah, Amir, someone go to a place and be a nice. Like, you know, since I work, man, I work. But, yeah. Um, there has been a Cash for Guns program for a while. Um, JamaicanTV.com. I'm not sure if it is still active, but I know it was there for a while. Um, the Get the Guns campaign, where weapons were handed over to the police and people were paid so um i don't know if it is still ongoing though so yeah craig is real i'll go on you man give thanks zimmy ah, boy don't you know they get to where my burn and grow Nobody, I just, no, 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 no. Damien White, thanks for the contribution in the broski. 
I appreciate the support, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, man. Mm. Yes, Rasta George. Gentleman on screen is a farmer, not a farmer, a pastor from Westmoreland. Yeah, man, Scotty Goodman. Scotty just been dealing with some stuff. Um, but she alright, man. So she just tired most of the time. But she good. And she had tried settle in after a, a little thing and thing and thing and thing. But she good, man. I know we see her one of them times soon. So gentleman on screen was killed today. Allegedly by... His teenage son, I think the child is 17, the boy is 17. Right? <clears throat> the teenage son of a popular Westmoreland pastor has been taken into custody by the police in connection with his stabbing death. Garnet Foster was found with stab wounds at the Peters at his well at the Petersfield home that he shared with his son. It is reported that early this morning. Residents raised an alarm after loud screams were heard coming from the premises. Checks were made on Foster, who preached at the Church of God of the Mountain Assembly in Petersfield, was discovered lying in his bed with multiple stab wounds. He was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Hospital, where he was pronounced dead, and the police were summoned, and following an investigation, his son was taken into custody for questioning. Ah, boy. Don't you know the kid to where we buy now, girl? No, no, no. I trust my mama and me know. 16-year-old fatally shot in Majesty Gardens. The police are investigating the fatal shooting of a 16-year-old boy in Majesty Gardens, St. Andrew. The teenager who is identified as Cleon Watson died on Wednesday from a bullet wound. It was reported that the teenager and other boys were at an apartment when he was shot. Cleon, or Kaleon, K-E-A-L-O-N, was pronounced dead at the hospital. Don't you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know about the shootout situation down at Denham Town Police Station, um, um, Maypen Cemetery area there, and the one down at Riverton, one was killed by the police down Bay Pen Cemetery. One was injured. Uh, one weapon, a nine millimeter pistol, was recovered in that incident. You know, in the come and investigate, the police are still also searching for some other men who were apparently involved in that shootout. Reports are that the men went to another community to do some shooting and were going back home when they were intercepted by cops and. A running gun battle ensued and one was shot and injured, one was shot and killed. Down by Riverton, apparently the police members from the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEP, were in the area and signaled a car to stop. Um, it is reported that a man exited the vehicle and opened fire at the police. The fire was returned. At the end of the shooting, three men were dead, two guns and AK-47 um, UTG AK-47 assault rifle and a Browning 9mm pistol were seized. The police are also searching for two other men who were apparently involved in that situation. So, yeah. Oh, it was, I think it was a quick response, Steve. Um... But isn't that a branch of P-Step? I'm not sure. Yeah, but it's a, it was a quick response team and probably not P-Step. So let me carry that. I'm mean, not really want to, you know, say the wrong thing. Yes, Rasta, for uh, We're done with the recent murder them. I could deal with some things that did not mean I passed because... Ja, ja. We have no Rasta. Accused in murder of Clarendon teacher Natalie Dawkins remanded. The two men charged for the murder of Clarendon teacher Natalie Dawkins were remanded when they appeared in the Clarendon Parish Court in the week. 
they are to return to court on September 13th. 20-year-old Eladia Goldburn of Sandy Bay District and 19-year-old Mario Headley of Palmer's Cross, Palmer's Cross District have been charged with murder, abduction, burglary, illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition and assault with intent to rape. Dawkins, a grade 3 teacher at the Four Parts Primary and Junior High School, was reported missing on Tuesday, March 30. Investigations led search teams to a shallow grave. Well, investigations led search teams to a shallow grave in Sandy Bay on Thursday, April 8, where her decomposed remains were found. The presiding judge, Anil Kut Gunness, Gunnesses. First, may I say that surname there? I'm going to drop this in this. Go on the bright, you know. I don't never waste no matter part no money when I go to school. See your name, yeah? Their name is different. I almost say Guinness, but never mind. Presiding judge, Mr. Monde, advised the men to seek legal aid assistance for their next court date. So these youths out here are kidnap people, are rob people. Attempt rape people, a bury people in a shallow grave, and then can't even retain a lawyer. So apparently, they have no legal representation and were instructed by the judge to seek legal aid assistance for the next court date. Ah, boy. Ah, boy. Go me now the ghetto we burn and grow. Oh no, no, I do me. Oh no. Broke badness cookie. <laughs> ja, ja. Mom pleads guilty to failing to notify authorities about pregnant 13 year old. <laughs> A Kingston woman was on Thursday hauled before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court for failing to notify the authorities about the pregnancy of her 13-year-old daughter. The teenager was reportedly impregnated by a 22-year-old pastor whom she met on Facebook. The woman who pleaded guilty to failing to report, the office, report to the Office of the Children's Registry, OCR, however, denied having knowledge about her daughter's condition. But never know such a pregnant, she insisted. She further told the parish court judge Laurie and Cole Montague that the child lives with her 71-year-old grandmother. The judge subsequently ordered a social inquiry report and extended her bail for her to return to court on October 26th. The grandmother has also been charged with failing to report to the Office of the Children's Registry while the pastor has been charged with rape. Hmm. According to allegations, the teen met the pastor in March after, of last year on Facebook and they started communicating. She was then reportedly invited to visit the pastor's church <coughs> and started attending regularly. It is further reported that the teen and the pastor would often communicate using her grandmother's phone. And that, when she became pregnant, she introduced the pastor to her grandmother as the man who had gotten her pregnant. It is also alleged that the man would visit her at the, at the grandmother's home and would stay over when he visits Kingston to attend church. The grandmother is also alleged to have collected money from the pastor to take care of the teens medical needs hello 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 look here man
you know, I don't think an abortion was done enough in her. I think it was to treat with the pregnancy. As Peter say, hello, 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 hello. Look here, man. Hmm. You see, police, politician, and pastor. I wonder if I really hear. I wonder if I really hear me read look a while. That. You know what? Uh, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. <laughs> Big up Project Davis, O.C. Tala, Talbert, and Satan. Him, him and Beef. My stepfather. Real Jenna. You understand? That man never arm um, up strong a year on my head. You see me? Figures a couple of times he did plan to fight me still, but he didn't bother. You see me? Because you know sometimes we used to get problem like, but. Uncle T, big up yourself. I don't know if you are watch, but you are boss. Tell about my stepmother and my stepfather to Jenna. You understand? Stepmother, greatest woman will ever live. Bar none. You see me? My stepfather, general in the army. But I do say I saw a stepmother out there and some stepfather out there. Then, then, then. <sighs> Stepfather charged after beating four-year-old child. After beating a four-year-old child dies. The stepfather of the four-year-old child. Ah oh boy. Blessings, Lady Maureen. Tess, what are going? Mmm. The stepfather of the four-year-old child who died after allegedly being beaten has been charged with multiple offences. 24-year-old Sean Bennett of Willowdean through way in Spanish Town St. Catherine has been charged with unlawful wounding, assault occasioning actual bodily harm, cruelty to a child, and the child abuse. So a murder there. It is reported that on Sunday, July 18th, Four-year-old Nashawn Brown complained of not feeling well and was given a meal by his mother. He was asked he was allegedly eating slowly when Bennett became angry and proceeded to beat him with a stick. Nashawn's mother reportedly intervened and was also assaulted. Shortly after, the child became unresponsive and was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Bennett is scheduled to appear in the St. Catherine Parish Court on Tuesday, July 27th. The police are awaiting the results of a post-mortem to determine if there should be additional charges. Yeah, like murder. What do you mean? No, first thing. How do you beat a child to eat? Second thing. How do you beat a child because the child is eating too slow? And thirdly, you have beat people with with stick because they might eat slower, brother. Oh.
And let me add something very unfortunate. Situations like these may continue because men who should be there for their children have abandoned them so other man of your raise them pick me. Hmm? No, look on the child's face. I don't know if this was in happier times, but this child looks like a child. Just this picture, and I am no expert photographic analyst. But this child looks like a child who is extremely sad, who is extremely withdrawn, and who is simply not a happy child. Just looking at the child. I could be wrong, but just looking at this photo. The mother intervened and she was apparently beaten as well. How long has this been going on for though? That is the thing. I I I would very I would be very very surprised to learn that this is the first instance of in, instance where this type of thing has occurred in that space. The lions them out there. The general them out there. Brother. We don't even stand by on the youths them. You understand what I mean? I say? No matter what thing rough, bro. Stand up with the youths. See? The last thing you want in the world. And as I say, you have very wonderful stepfathers out there. And I can attest to that, you know. See? But. Cherry is a youth, man. I mean, I said no fathers out there will not do them something at you, you know. But, some of their youth, man. You understand what I say? Some of their youth. And you know what made this even more incredibly sad? It is the second such incident in recent times that has occurred in this country. Hmm? As this young lady, this, this baby girl, I think she was seven years old, died at hospital reportedly from injuries she sustained after she was beaten by her stepmother and her father mother and stepfather or something um the the the, the report is that the autopsy for the for the little angel she died from blunt force trauma so I'll see where that case goes this this case was in Linstead It's being nice in me now, making it. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know him so so miserable. Some minute.
APs. Um, him kind of get some shots at him kind of miserably, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, and if he come, if, if me ever carry him in, him, why in it tonight? If carry him, yeah, why are Um, yeah, peeps, so, sorry about that. On the topic of stepfather. Ex-convict charged for raping nine-year-old stepdaughter. I'm good now, Empress Winsome, man. I'm alright. Um, I'm good now. A 31-year-old ex-convict in Hanover has been arrested and charged for allegedly raping his 9-year-old stepdaughter. The police say the child was raped at their home on two occasions in March. <laughs> the accused man, who has been on the run since the incident came to light in June, was held at a funeral in Cocoon Castle, also in Hanover on Tuesday. Them should just bury him in a bed. Bury him on the left cemetery. You know? bury, bury him, said time, man. Just dig him a grave, man. The molested child has been taken into state care. A policeman who is familiar with the criminal history of the accused man said that a few years ago he served time in prison for a house breaking. Meanwhile, Superintendent Sharon B. Put, the commanding officer for Hanover, says police have been taking a zero tolerance approach against sex offenders. Oh boy, let me forget to interest that. These are the things happening in Jamaica land we love. And Boy, James, I wish we could end that, brother. But you see, everything is a teaching, is a teaching opportunity, you know, bro. Because watch her. As me I try to appeal to the soldier, then, brother, stand up with your youths. Who not see what stepfather and stepmother do to youths, brother? Stand up with your youth, man. You understand? Don't give up. Your responsibility as a man for stand up with your youth. Woman, I understand say yo, you and the father break up and you move on with your life. But you can't care every man in your life, brother. Sister. My nine year old daughter. <laughs> and everything good for good for dogs, you know. Let me just make it go on. I them up there go on but how many times I have done stories dealing with stepfathers abusing stepdaughters and even stepsons? Physically, sexually. I'm done with them story they announcement. Well known lawyer walks free of charges relating to 19 missing guns. Montego Baby's attorney Tara Morgan was on Tuesday freed of all charges in relation to the loss of 19 firearms and a large quantity of ammunition from a security company. The 36 year old lawyer, who was a director of the company, is located in Montego Bay, St. James, was charged for failing to secure a place for the storage of the firearms and ammunition. Morgan's parents, Courtney Morgan and Pauline Smith, who are involved in the company, were also charged in the matter. However, they pleaded guilty and were both fined last year. I remember I said they plead guilty. 
It was reported that on the 25th of May 2019, the security company was broken into and firearms and ammunition were stolen. Following this, an audit was conducted by officers from the Firearms Licensing Authority. The audit revealed that the premises was not properly secured and was poorly maintained. However, the trial on the cross at the trial on the cross-examination, Morgan's attorney, Queen's, Coun Queen's Counsel Peter Champigny, suggested to the main witnesses for the prosecution that taking all into account, the premises was secured even though the witness had previously stated that it wasn't. The witness agreed with the suggestion. <laughs> It was further revealed on the cross-examination that there were no written regulations governing the specific breaches that covered the areas that gave rise to a view that the premises was not properly secured. At the end of the cross-examination, the prosecution was constrained to offer no further evidence against Morgan, and the matter was heard in the Montego Bay Parish Court. I said I had a close one yesterday. Ja put an angel over me. Be strong. Well, a firm meditation. Invest addicts, big up yourself. One day, things must get better. Don't you go down, keep your head above the water. I got so much things to say right now. So much things to say. But night will turn day, <laughs> and all of these people will have to run away. <laughs> yes, Rasta George. PNP activists slapped with $750,000 fines for breaching court orders. <laughs> See if China not invest. You know, I appreciate the service, brother, brother. Yeah, man, give thanks, man. Mm. So that is Karen. So Karen and friend. Two controversial People's National Party activists, Karen Cross and Natalie Stack, were each fined $750,000 on Thursday after being found guilty of contempt of court for breaching a Supreme Court order. High Court Judge Justice Chester Stamp ordered the woman to pay the fines within 14 days or serve six months in prison. The woman are defendant in a multi-million dollar defamation lawsuit that was filed by PNP General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell. Hmm. Cross and Stapp made several social media posts earlier this year alleging that the firebrand PNP General Secretary had sexual relations with several underage girls as recently as 2016. Cross and Stapp were found guilty of contempt for reportedly breaching a court order to remove the social media posts that were made, up, that were made about Campbell. The women also failed to desist from talking about the allegations in the public domain. Campbell has consistently denied the allegations of sexual misconduct and threatened Cross and Stack with a defamation lawsuit that was eventually filed in March of this year, telling them to effectively put up or shut up. But undeterred by the threat of legal action, Cross filed her own countersuit, which contains alleged statements from three women who claimed that they had sexual relations with Campbell on several occasions when they were minors. The names of those women were not disclosed in the statements, which were signed by a justice of the peace. Yes. Continuing. Unjust and unfair. So, Karen and Natalie are set to appeal the guilty verdict in Damien, in Dayton Campbell case. <laughs> Citing unjust treatment, defense attorney representing controversial PNP activist Karen Cross and United States blogger Natalie Stack 
says he will be appealing a $750,000 fine that was imposed on his clients for contempt of court. The women who are defendants, I don't know all of that already. I don't know say 14 days or 6 months. I don't know say Chester stamps or some things. Um, and them something. But attorney at law, Robert Colley, says the women are not fairly treated when their order was made in April by Justice Natalie Hart Hines. It seems to me that the judge ignored a provision in our constitution that provides for someone to be legally represented. Because Miss Cross and Miss Stack were served with a document for injunction 24 hours before the hearing for the injunction and the judge did not even allow them to get legal representation under such circumstances, which seemed to be unjust. As soon as I was aware that my clients had made these postings, they were advised in no uncertain terms to remove them, and they did remove them. However, the judge did not seem to consider that as a point, of, as a point in their favor in respect to the contempt proceedings. Nevertheless, the attorney continued, We have seven days to appeal to the court of appeal in respect to the current ruling and we are filing our notice of the application to set aside the injunction. We will also be filing an affidavit of urgency to urge the court to hear this matter as soon as possible, given that the defendant's liberty is at stake for speaking what they believe is their truth. In the meantime, Collie said that his clients are abiding by the court orders and will continue to do so. <laughs> yeah, alright. Enough of them. Me just as share that and you know what I mean. So as some local development that go on. Mm. Mother, 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 mother who. Mother remanded in child trafficking case. <laughs> a Kingston woman accused of prostituting her 14-year-old daughter was remanded in custody when she appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. The 36-year-old woman is charged with child trafficking and a 57-year-old man was reportedly given permission by the mother to have sexual relations with a teen is charged with having sexual intercourse with a person. Under 16. The male accused, however, had his bail extended when he appeared in court. Both accused are to return to court on the 2nd of September. They were both offered $400,000 bail when the matter was first mentioned earlier this month, but the mother is yet to take up her bail offer. <laughs> According to allegations, between 2019 and 20, June 2021, the mother gave the male accused permission to, to take her daughter to his home where the teen was forced to perform sexual acts. The mother on various occasions reportedly collected sums of money and items from the male accused before and after allowing him to take her daughter to his home. It is further alleged that when the teenager complained to her mother about what was happening, she, told, she was told to keep quiet and the mother continued to send her daughter to the man's home. Mother, 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 who, who, who. Mama, mama. Big up. Yes, I suffer. And the child stepmother, you know, her auntie, her cousin, you know, and the child mother. You know, she can't even post four hundred thousand dollars bill. Hmm? And she has been prostituting her fourteen year old child for a fifty seven year old man. Mm. 
14 year old boy drowns in St. Anne. I may share that story if you make a point, you know what? The St. Anne police are investigating the drowning death of a teenager in Brownstone on Thursday. He has been identified as 14 year old Christopher Lynch of Lincoln District in Brownstone, who was a student of Brownstone High School. It is reported that the teenager was at home with his mother, Shereen, or Sherian Ogart. Yeah? Them sorry name still about her. When he left and went next door to swim in a neighbor's underground tank. Then at the time, no parent or guardian was at home with, with only the homeowners, three children, all aged below 13 being present. It is reported that while trying to swim, Christopher got into difficulties and sank to the bottom of the tank and allegedly drowned. The fire department was called and firefighters assisted in draining the tank and retrieved his body. The police say no foul play is suspected at this time. Do I big up yourself? Underground tank. Jaja. No man, that don't need a bro god. Um them tank that the bow man. Some people bear, um build them tank underground man. Zin? And thing I suppose to conserve space on the surface. But but that no new still. Um, <laughs> um we are now in the summer months and historically a number of children, unfortunately, lose their lives in our rivers and at our beaches at this time of the year. So I am using this opportunity to appeal to parents and guardians to be cognizant of the fact that it is a possibility and to try as best as possible to provide supervision. It took no more open. Normally you kinda of close off with just only, you know, an entry point. So I don't know if this one was open still, so I don't know. But I know of tanks being built on the ground. That that's not to me still. Yeah, but if you turn below on the ground, what if you stop it from drink same way? If the walls them concrete off and your, your, your clothes off the top are almost close off, what, what, nothing can stop the water from the drink, brother, if you're on the ground. You understand? So if the, if the structure is built properly, you understand? But I don't see where, you know what I mean? So I know that parents have to work, but if you have to work, away from home try to create a situation where some form of supervision especially adult supervision is 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 possible i mean know some of the kids them unruly and them still will do things but parents beware and the youths them all i need for all some others you know but children will be children to still you know it's it rough rasta just try balance it in. You see me? Hmm. Women shielding gangsters. Cops say fear of sex as enabling role in criminal activities. Is that not new? You understand? This has been from the beginning of time, eh? Um, we have been speaking about these things for years now. You see me? The, 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 more women are aiding the illicit activities of criminals in the corporate area, according to two police division commanders. Their involvement, the cops stated, serves as a comfort to wanton criminals who continue to wreak havoc in society. They are the ones who stay on the corners and use their phones to tell their guys about the whereabouts of the police. Oftentimes, you go on an operation. They serve as distractors. They try to do everything, make noise, hurl stones at the police, and mount protests just to distract us from our focus 
said Superintendent Mikhail Phipps, commanding officer of the Kingston Western Division. Phillips said that these women, usually the mothers and girlfriends of the wanted men, will take on the role of their handlers in order for them to evade the police. From time to time, we get information that the women will sometimes transport the guns. So what we seek to do at all times is to have female cops that can search females when we have them, when we have them coming across our checkpoints or wherever, he said. Superintendent Kirk Ricketts, who is in charge of the St. Andrew South Division, adds that the involvement of women makes it very difficult for its officers to get a grip of crime and violence. Women are key components of what is happening. A lot of the shootings and killings are being driven by the activities of women. They cook, wash clothes, offer sex, hide guns, demonstrate when the police act against these criminals, he said. This makes policing extremely difficult. It is like policing an entire community as opposed to a gang. The involvement of women doesn't necessarily mean they are jumping out of cars and firing at the police, but this seems to be growing as generations change. <coughs> Not new. You understand? Mm. Not no new about this, yeah. Lady B on top of a good night, Empress. And unfortunately, the trend will continue as many of these young girls, they want to live their best life, but don't want to work. You understand? So these men rob and loot and kill and extortion and lottery scam to take care of them. You understand? And as such, they provide intel and information as to the police to these men and all of them something you understand and i say an next thing some people could as vex but we don't care who vex we don't care who vex we don't know anything we're not really busy with people most of the time sometimes some women out there get it and we ball and we boop man them some of them women they forget it let me take off my glass again some of them women they out there who die violently and many of us are saying this and some of them are criminal we're not talking about the innocent women who are being preyed on by our men we are talking about the criminal women them who are get it then forget it you understand and nobody knows to make a nice when some man wait it you see me because not for the violence about them might help set it you see me yeah mm -hmm. You know, the girl in Ghana and a beat around bush business. Yes, Rasta. Yeah, hey, peeps. So, you are going, you know. Me know so some people are going to bend up their face, but as me just said, me no, me, me, me no business. I lie, me I tell us, but um, that's where I'll end for tonight. One, me hungry, that I want, but I also have an early interview tomorrow. And I have been, as me telling the last time, I had interviews every day this week, except today. And today, I spent most of the day at the hairdresser with my daughter and then sitting there. So, we're there. So, we have to go. Yeah, you know I mean, we have an early interview tomorrow. I'm going to go now and joke before I left still. So, Monday, I you know I'm supposed to do an interview. Preparing all a Sunday night. I'm ready, I'm ready for the interview. I'm ready. You understand know what I mean? I say. Beard and then sitting there, because you know that are right. and we will we, we, we'll cut show about the yeah, interview. When we reach the location, we await upon the legendary man. And when we did wait upon the man, you know, you man, you will call him, man, you man, saying soon forward. I saw a nice vehicle pull up, and well, we see a, a empress and our next brother in a vehicle. But me know the artist, how the artist looks. So I look for the artist. Scotty call the artist again, and because Scotty been an interface with the artist. You see? And I said, singer, what well, go on? He must say, I'm there. So we are saying, where you there? He must say, I'm in a vehicle, back out of a vehicle. Where's the vehicle, back out of a vehicle? I mean, support her. I mean, girl out there. I mean, I said, boom, so. When I check a stock, it's the singer's son forward for the interview because the singer and his son have the same name. You understand? So we are looking for his senior and I junior forward. Because all this time Scotty had talked to the junior and we even know. 
So, I did have to come back to my yard. You yeah, understand? So, I never end up doing an interview Monday, but Monday, I edit the parallel at the interview right through there. So, I did tired to for a Sunday night into that. So, when I go for interview the great Carl Dawkins, it's Carl Dawkins Jr. turn up. <laughs> Yo, we just laugh, man. No, 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 no. Tyrus Riley's father died, you know, Peter. So I, it couldn't be um, Jimmy. Jimmy passed that. Yes. I mean, I say, hey, man, so I say, I mean, I say, you know, I look for Mr. Dawkins. I say, yeah, man, I'm Mr. Dawkins, you know. I say, I call Dawkins, I look for me, G. I say, yeah, man, I call Dawkins, man. Now you name teacher. I say, yeah, man, I'm me, man. Yeah, son. But say, the hell that me come for reason with brother. <laughs> yo, yo, me just laugh at. I me say yo, I me say me, I me say me, me no know. I was so ready for that interview because Carl Dawkins, Jaja, yeah man, call call me next day and oh Lily, <laughs> call call me next day and I say no about a day after so and I say yeah man, thing. So we supposed to knock out that one day next week. Eh. Hey, me laugh, man. Me just have to laugh. This is where you're going to do. Yeah, man. Big up to Carl Dawkins Sr. and Carl Dawkins Jr. You understand what I mean? Yeah, man. You see what I mean? And me, I say, me, that day, they're clean, you know? You understand? And me just... Jaja. Carl Dawkins Jr. I see him I see him and drive up and I see him and pull him door and, you know, put out him foot. Clean too. I mean, I said, nah, man, you know, Carl Dawkins. I mean, I know Carl Dawkins. And we said, we call Carl. I never see money for on time phone. Because I scat your call. And he said, we're there, man. We're there, man. There, me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I saw a thing about it. You see, if I did me a talk to the artist for a long time, I didn't figure out still. Because I didn't know. You understand what I mean? But I know that Junior had the music to you, but I never Junior time it still. You see me a Junior time. So we're supposed to knock out that. So last week was very rough. So that interview never worked out. But because I spent Sunday night after I done stream into Monday morning, I edit um, Philip Paul Elliott interview and then do the research for Carl Dawkins right through the day. I did frost out and then Tuesday now, I have an interview with Langso. You understand? Eh, the, and then, I not even catch a premiere. So, then again, Wednesday, I have an interview in a day early Wednesday. So, I have to prepare for that again. Thursday, last night, me interview a living legend in I think again. How was that going for? Forward in, all arrest. Wake up this morning. We have an appointment at the hair salon um, for my daughter. Plus, my kind of whole at three man. You know what I mean? One girl played my foot and cut my toe nail and them something. And thing. And um, yes, most of the day and then, then sit there. Then we have an interview tomorrow early. So, eh. Eh. So, your week has been rough. Yeah? I one video me upload from a week other than interview. So, you know what I think about. These work, the work will pay for itself down the road. In August, so I kind of got to take a little break and do some other channel work and things. Because I have a million interviews to so them upload. You see me I say? So, yeah, man, it has been rough. But I have a next interview tomorrow, next week now. Me and Carl Darkin, senior, got all the reason. Plus some other people. You know what I mean? We give thanks. Because, you know what I mean? Peace. Big up on yourself. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. Zane, I said I don't have a streaming ball because I promise you that I stream again and I don't have a chance to forward on tonight and I'll come all the reason. You know the thing go. Peace, big up on yourself. It's rough out there. The COVID situation is becoming concerned again. Plus, we are on watch for the Delta variant. Zane, I suppose you have an Alpha variant and a Delta variant. Um, so we are on watch for the Delta variant. I think it was found in Antigua um, today or yesterday. And them something there, so we are watching and see. We, we have to be careful, peace. That's something I still, uh, still about. You understand? And I am foreseeing some tighter restrictions being imposed in the coming weeks if the numbers continue to rise. 
and I fear that the children will suffer again come September because physical school may not be a possibility. So them look at things. The crime, I don't know if it's about the crime. I don't know. I'm just, as I said, I'm telling them I'm tired of it, but we still have to talk about it because we can't be silent in Babylon and somebody have to talk. Zane and, and, and we always have a look up strength and you know, you reach a few places. So when we, when we point out some things, people kind of deal with the thing on a level. Um, Craig Angus, thanks for the contribution, my brother. Really and truly, I appreciate it. So, people, big up on yourself. Soon on Sunday, Zane, we stream again. I know, say, um, interview Tuesday. We need to start edit that too. Admiral Bailey, we not even keep no secret. You understand? I don't think we did done. <laughs> Never mind. Anyways, peace. Big up on yourself. Out of love. Walk good. Step with Jack. See you trouble on the graphic. Me soon. Sunday. Make it a date and don't be late. Don't look fit. Get book fit. I'm out. Thank you for tuning in. Like the stream before you go. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Remember to share the stream with your family and friends and browse the channel for more amazing content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them. Hey, yo, yellow. Send a message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing.